Hi, my name is Stefan Rinke. I'm a languages teacher and I like computers. And uh, today I'm starting a series of talks about how you can use Web 2.0 applications in language teaching. Um, I thought I'd start with a nice and easy, simple topic. And I want to tell you today how you can use Google Maps in language teaching. There are a couple of things that you will need to do the things that I'm going to show you. Uh, you will need a Google account, uh, ready prepared route descriptions perhaps, so that you can either print them off or display them on an overhead projector or an interactive whiteboard. And also, you could do with a classroom with computers for every pupil, but that's not strictly necessary. It would be just nice. Your students just need a Google account, which uh, some of them may well already have. The first thing I want to show you is probably the most basic um, way of using Google Maps um, is to show people or pupils, students you teach, um, the places that the textbook talks about that perhaps uh, are mentioned in the text that you bring into your language sessions. Um, perhaps you're taking a, a class trip to Germany, France or wherever and uh, you want your pupils to have an idea of what the place is actually like before they, they get there. Um, so that's one of the ways you can use Google. Um, you just enter maps.google.com and that will take you straight to Google Maps. Once you're there, you just need to enter the location you want to find. I quite like the Place de Vosges in Paris. Uh, so you just enter that, click on search maps, and it will take you there straight away. I'll just give us some more space here. Let's get rid of that. And one of the nice things is that you don't only have a map view, but you can have a proper satellite picture. There we are. You can scroll in and out either by using those buttons or by using the scroll wheel of your uh, of your mouse. You can zoom in and out. So let's zoom in a tiny weeny bit. There we are. Now if for some reason you still need the street names, you can click on the hybrid view and that will provide you with the street names on top of the satellite picture. Now if you want your students to talk and listen uh, a bit more, um, you can get them to practice giving directions. Um, I already said that you could prepare some directions already. Um, I've got a German set of instructions on how to get to Aldi there. Um, for those of you who don't speak German, I've got the same in English as well. And uh, what you need to do is you just tell students to log into their Google account and then go to Google Maps again by entering maps.google.com. You tell them where they need to start their journey. Um, I'm going to start in Street A uh, in Staffordshire just outside my local pub. Then by using the My Maps feature they can uh, follow the route of, uh, you know, the route you've given them. Ask them to click on Create New Map. Give it a name. I will call it Aldi since we're going there. Save it. And then you can get rid of this. You may have realized that there are four new buttons there. We will use the Draw Line buttons to draw the route that those descriptions give us. By the way, if you thought those pictures were quite grainy and blurry, um, don't worry, if you actually go onto Google Maps, those pictures are quite crisp. Uh, it's just got to do with the quality of the video here. So I click to start drawing a line. The instruction set goes straight on. I can map along like this. Still straight on. There we have the bridge which we've got here, and now we've come to the roundabout. We were told to leave at the second exit. That's the first exit there. There's the second exit, and then go straight on. Keep going straight on. Go. We come to a roundabout. That's where the instructions. The other roundabout, we were told to use the first, second, 
third exit and it also said that Aldi would be on the right and here yeah. you, to in, you could take him back to the start and get asked to give a name to the line so it's the way to Aldi press OK go back to my map and ask the students to save the route now this way they can always call up the saved route uh, which means that you can actually check the results whether they really ended up where they were supposed to be there are obviously some variations if you're one of the lucky ones who has got a classroom with a computer for every pupil you can get them to sit next to one another without being able to see the monitor of the other pupil um, one pupil gives directions both trace the route on the screen and uh, when the directions are finished they can just compare whether they've really reached the same destination or whether somebody made a mistake um, you can also get pupils to trace a route, save them in Google Maps, print them off, bring them back into school and then the next time you could have uh, as a little warm-up exercise distribute those maps. Uh, pupils have to describe the directions there and uh, a different pupil could for example follow the route on an interactive whiteboard. Well these are sort of the most obvious uses for Google Maps and language teaching. Um, I'm sure there are several more. Um, if you think of any, I'm always open to suggestions, would be quite interested in them as well. You can mail me at info at stefanrinke.net or of course you can leave a comment. Thank you for your time, I hope you found this useful and uh, perhaps you'd also like to watch the other videos in the series. Bye for now.